The importance of being uh, world class uh, in Polygen's eyes is that we maintain our uh, standard of uh, quality across the world. With the, uh, the UN and so on uh, getting in there with this uh, World Health Association, we're getting into more of the hand washing and uh, so on to try and uh, stifle diseases. But le legislation's ki kicking that in, I mean, in Europe particularly. Um, you have to have now hand washing, warm water hand washing on a building site, on a construction site. Um, and that was unheard of 20 years ago. It Same in the United States. Yeah. It's, it's yes. coming, it's coming. The values that Polygen represents is the, uh, uh, the fact that they can call us at any time, uh, day or night, and they can uh, get the product that they need. Uh, at the time that they need it. And we will be there for them to make sure that it uh, is a successful uh, venture, whether it be uh, an emergency uh, like the tsunami or whether it be uh, just a special event, uh, you know, like the, uh, the Olympics or something like that. Uh, whatever it is, we will be there for them. But the whole thing really, worldwide, is around the world, it's trust. Everybody trusts Polly John. And we, most of my customers are now friends. I started with Polygon as a customer and then became part of Polygon. So I've been associated with Polygon for 20 years now. And as a customer, the thing that was so strong was the trust, the integrity, and also coming from England where if you, if you placed an order, it was, well, we can do it maybe next month, and maybe Polygon was the, the can-do attitude. Yes, we can do it now. And I think, and that's never changed in really? 20 years. Polygon around the world now in, in, the, in the last 20 years is, is, is the name is synonymous with quality, um, quality people, quality products. We have learned a lot by going uh, uh, worldwide and we have adapted our company to be worldwide. Well, we've made a lot of product revisions due to suggestions from customers, and, yes, we and have. Uh, most of them, as a matter of fact. I, I would say practically all of them. <laughs> all of the design changes we've ever made have been customer-driven and based on suggestions by people from all over the world. We introduced a new product yesterday, uh, a hand sanitizing station that was wow. directly designed by one of our customers. All we did was tweak it. Well, I think I think what we were talking about is the way that we listen and respond and that's another example it's a problem we listen and we respond we adapt to whatever the customer requires uh, in singapore they're, they're, which is a very very clean country their, their standards their, de their demands for sanitation are so high just for a construction worker uh, not just for a construction worker but for a construction worker they, they demand fresh water flushing um, Australia, they, they, by legislation, they have to have fresh water hand washing, fresh water flushing, no static toilets. In Canada too, in Ontario at least, we have to have a flush and a hand wash facility in every toilet on a work site. Yeah, well that's the same in the UK yeah. also, the uh, le legislation uh, backs that up. But it's, but it's interesting that we're now looking to um, the, the two major continents that we're not uh, currently strong in, which is India and China. Uh, to two countries, both uh, with over a billion people, 1.3 billion in uh, China and 1.2 billion in India. And the sanitation requirements there are absolutely huge. Um, and the challenge there is to supply a toilet which they can put together simply with local labor. You can't go in the middle of China to the local Home Depot and buy a rivet gun or a rivet. Uh, so we've designed the toilet um, by, by in collaboration with, with, with customers, which can be put together very simply with a wrench. One wrench will put, the, put, put it together. We can also, over the years, uh, the issue of transportation has become more and more uh, a big issue for cost. Where you, you buy a toilet, X Whiting, Indiana, buy a Polygon, X Whiting, Indiana, you can double the price of that to send it to some of the islands off yes. Australia. Um, we also, uh, in recent times, because of the taxation, um, tariffs into some countries. Uh, we manufacture in Brazil now for the South American market um, to get away from the tariffs. It's a, a toilet would double in price going from Whiting to Brazil. Um, now we manufacture in Brazil for that market. And we're very, we, we, we are now also looking to manufacturing in, in India, which is an interesting, uh, an interesting one. They have literally no toilets. 
the demand is absolutely huge and the challenge now over the next five, ten years is to bring sanitation to, uh, to India. And we're using the, uh, in China, we're using the Beijing Olympics as the focus to, to move forward. I think from my, my guys out in the field, I expect them to be uh, the most knowledgeable uh, representative of the industry as a whole, not just Polygen, but uh, as the industry as a whole, since they're the ones that are the resource for the guy in the field that's trying to make a living. And it's an it's important responsibility for us, since we are worldwide and we, and we are available to find out cutting edge type things, that we can bring that through our field people right to the customer, whether it be in Iowa or Alberta or wherever with the latest. And, that's, and I think they look to us for that. Well, one thing about our uh, Mike's uh, uh, people that he's got working with him, most of them are ex-portable toilet operators. So they go in with a knowledge right off from day one on how special events should be run, how many servicing should be done. Uh, they bring a wealth of information right to our customers to help them get this, be successful with this uh, special event. And that's carried over into Vernon's staff and Margaret's staff and, sure, and, okay. and, our, news, and our newest venture in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Brazil. Uh, that that's carries on and, and we've, we feel like that we're the resource for the guy on the street trying to make a living. And it's our responsibility to help him make a quality living for and feed his family, put his kids through school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We take that very seriously. If we make him successful, then we are going to be successful.